Well, hey, y'all. My name is Isaiah Terry, and I am the director at Wesley House here at Highland Parking and Methodist Church. And I am so pleased to be with you this morning. I'm really excited because we are in Matthew chapter 11, and I think it's a semi-obscure passage when you read it the first time, but it has a lot of depth for us. So with no further ado, I'm going to dive in. So if you're following along this morning, I will be in chapter 11, and I would love nothing more than for you to follow along with us. So this morning uh, in chapter 11, we find ourselves reading about John the Baptist, okay? So John the Baptist um, has some questions, and we can't really blame him, right, because we have our own questions and our own faith. Um, some might have to do with the Bible that we're reading, right? We're doing a Bible reading plan. And I'm sure along the way you've had some questions. You're like, is this real? Um, does this, what's going on here? Jesus, did he really do these things? Is my faith in Jesus um, real to prayer, right? Is that real? Am I really talking to God? Like we have a ton of questions and John is no different. You see, John is seen as the person who's paving the way for the Messiah, right? We're going to read literally, uh, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you here in a second. And it's a play off of Malachi 3.1 where it literally said that, right? I'm going to send someone first. That person's going to pave the way. And then Jesus, the Messiah, is going to come. So John's probably thinking, okay, if you're with the Messiah and I'm really the one paving the way here for you, why am I in jail? <laughs> you know, that's his question, like, why am I in jail? And so he he's probably thinking this, and because of that, he sends a message to Z Jesus. So if you're following along, uh, we're going to start in verse 2, okay? It says this, Now when John, while imprisoned, right, he's in jail, heard the works of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the expected one? Hmm. Or shall we look for someone else? Are you the expected one or should we expect someone else? He's seen all this stuff and heard everything that Jesus has to say. And he's like, prove it, right? I remember this, this classic question, um, you know, with, with my siblings growing up, one of them, one of us would hit the other. I was the older brother. It was likely me hitting my brother. Um, so he'd be like, I'm going to tell mom. And I'd say, prove it, right? Prove it. And that's no difference here. I've seen all this. I hear what you're saying. Prove it. Prove it. Are you, are you the one? Are you the expected one or should we look for someone else? I heard that I was paving the way for you, yet I'm in jail. What's going on here? And Jesus answers in an obscure way. So we're going to see Jesus answer here in verse 4. He says, Jesus answered and said to him, Go and report to John what you hear and you see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who does not take offense at me. <laughs> John's question is, Jesus, is this really you? Are you the expected one? Prove it. And Jesus doesn't say, yes, I am. No, I'm not. He says, well, why don't you tell me? Like, wait, I'm, hold on, I asked you to prove yourself to me, and your answer is, you tell me? He's like, well... Those who didn't used to be able to hear can hear now, right? And he's like, well, yeah. Those who were blind can now see, right? Yeah. Well, the leopards are cleansed now, right? Yeah. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Like, well, okay. So he's like, you tell me. Is, does that sound like the person you're expecting or does it not? Because <laughs> that sounds pretty great to me. And the people hearing this, you know, they probably have their own set of questions. But they're really starting to probably question John, right? Like, whoa, um, this is the person paving the way for Jesus, and he has these questions for Jesus. And, and then so Jesus goes on a discourse about defending, defending John, right? He says, what did, I, what did you go out into the wilderness to see, a reed shaken by the wind? No, John's not shaking in the wind like a reed. But did you go out and see a man dressed in soft cl cloth? Those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. But what did you go see, a prophet? Yes, I tell you. And one is more than a prophet. This is the one whom it is written, right? This Malachi 3, 1 verse I was talking about. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will repair your way before you. Right? He's like, look, don't worry about John. John's good. John's not shaking in the wind. John's not sitting in a palace somewhere hoping that someone else does the hard work. John is a prophet. John is proclaiming the gospel. Don't worry about John. And as Jesus normally does, he goes and then turns it into them, right? He turns the table. 
And he goes in, in verse 16, he says, here's what you should really think about, right? This is, this is what should be going through your mind. It says, but to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the market places who call out to other children and say, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn for John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say he was a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. They say, behold, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. It's like, don't worry about John. Maybe you should think about yourself for a second, right? John's saying, is this you? Jesus says, well, you tell me. Of course, the answer is like, well, then based on what I've seen, yeah, you're probably the expected one. The people are like, wait, John's questioning you. And he's like, don't worry about John. Worry about yourself. And here's why. Because you are seeing all this going on yourself, right? You're seeing all these miracles. You're seeing all these really, really amazing things going on, and you're not doing anything about it. Right? How could you witness all of this and literally do nothing about it? He's like, don't worry about John. Worry about this generation because this generation has a problem that's on, on his hands. It's that they've seen God and they're doing nothing about it. I tell my college students all the time that one of the greatest shames in Christianity is experiencing the divine, experiencing God, seeing God work in your life and it doing nothing to change you, to transform you, to change your life whatsoever. That's the, that, that's the greatest shame, to experience it, to witness and be so blinded and so dead in your heart not to have it impact you in whatsoever. And that's what's happening here. He's like, don't worry about John. Think about yourself and think about your generation. You've seen all these amazing things and you're doing nothing about it. But the good news, it says, yet wisdom is vindicated by your deeds. I was like, right. Yes, John has these questions. Yes, John's in jail. But at the end of the day, wisdom is vindicated by our deeds. John's doing the right thing, not the easy thing. And he's going to be proved right by all this. So what does this mean for us? In this last minute, maybe you have some questions. And maybe they're good ones. Maybe they're tough ones. Maybe they're the ones that you've sought out answers for and you're, they're just not quite aligning. You have really tough questions. And this scripture for us today is saying, ask those questions, great, that's good. But be like John the Baptist, right? Don't be shaken in the wind like a reed. Keep your boots on the ground, do the hard work. Don't sit in your palace and hope that someone else does the hard work, right? That someone else is gonna get the clothes dirty. Be someone who gets their clothes dirty, be a person that's proclaiming the gospel. Be a prophet. And then find gratefulness somewhere in there to say that you're a part of this humongous story and you've seen Jesus and you've seen God work in your life, maybe in small, tiny ways, maybe some bigger, other transformative ways, but let that be a testimony. Let that be a testament to who you, uh, to who Jesus is and the validity of Christ. And by doing this, right, the right thing, not the easy thing. I tell it to my students all the time. Do the right thing, not the easy thing. By doing these things, you will be proven right. And many, many people will come to know Christ because of you. I'm really excited about this message because I think that it's a really strong message for us to be reminded that even you, whoever is watching this video right now, can have questions, really tough questions. That even John, a hero in her faith, right? The person that paved the way for Jesus to come can have questions. But at the end of the day, those questions, A, one, aren't bigger than God. And two, lead us into a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God. Don't be someone this week don't be someone today that misses out on all of the amazing things that God is showing us and teaching us. Don't be someone who experiences the divine and goes out through it their whole life with zero to no impact or change in life. Be someone who is grateful and sees all the ways that God's working in their life. Let that transform you. Let that be a testament to the validity of Christ. Do the right thing, not the easy thing. And at the end of the day, Regardless of the seeming consequences of following Jesus, whether you're like John who found himself in jail, whether you're like Paul or many other disciples who were killed in the name of Jesus, you'll be proven right because wisdom is vindicated by what? Their deeds. The doing and the loving and the knowing will be vindicated by the deeds. Because at the end of the day, we don't believe a God that is distant that doesn't exist, that isn't real. We believe in a God that is active and working. We believe in a living, the living word of God, the word of God that teaches us something every single day. Let it teach you something. Hey, 
Thank you for joining us this morning. Many blessings. And uh, thanks for joining us on this Matthew reading plan.